Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Oneness Junkie podcast, hosted by me, Lydia Smith, a self-proclaimed Oneness Junkie. Oneness Junkie is a place to be inspired, encouraged, and supported. Learn from the individuals who are working to make the world a better place. Let's meet today's guest. Hi, everybody. This is Lydia. And today I have a very special guest with me. I'm sitting here with Jeremy Tararup. <laughs> Did I get my R's right? A little bit overly so. <laughs> you're like, you like, you like, you got too good. <laughs> okay. Uh, y'all, I totally practiced that way before I hit the record button. <laughs> <laughs> like like 20 times so anyway um that's actually a Thai name a Thai last name so um Jeremy thanks for being here today oh very you're very welcome thank you for just kind of touching base after about 10 years now been, I know uh, I know so I can't long. wait to tell I know I can't wait to tell my audience how I know you so and why you're on the show So um, as everyone knows, I like to start off by uh, introducing if I know or don't know my guest and how I know them or how I met them, because it's always a neat story. And then I and then I'm going to let Jeremy um, give you a little background. He go back to like your childhood and then bring you up to up to where you are, you know, today as far as what you're doing. And then we're going to talk about a really exciting topic that I hope a lot of y'all enjoy, if it's never been something you've listened to before, I hope to bring, we hope to bring some new levels of awareness and understanding for you. So today I am going to share how I met Jeremy. So literally it was 10 years ago. So I guess, I think it was 2011 actually, or 2012, 2012. Okay. 2012. 2012. Okay. So it's 2012. And, um, I had a meetup group. Do you, Jeremy, do you remember how we met? I'm going to tell I you if you don't. I reached out to you, I think. Did yeah, yeah, not? yeah. Okay, yeah. yes. So I had a meetup. I have a lot of meetup groups, but back then I had this one. I don't have it anymore, but I created like in 2007, I created this group called the Houston Weight Loss and Support Group. And were you in Houston at the time, Jeremy? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So you were in Houston. All right, so... I had, you know, five or 600 members. And um, I have to say this part first, which is about two, no lie, about two weeks prior to Jeremy emailing me through the group um, admin contact email, I said, I wish I could find someone who could help me understand at a soul level like why I'm blocked in these particular areas. It actually happened to be, you know, like a weight loss interest at the time. And so I was just like, why am I not pursuing what I think I want? You know, why am I struggling? You know, and, but I wanted it at a, at a deeper level. You know, I wanted like, I, for some reason I felt like I could find out, you know, maybe there was somebody out there at a soul level who could work with me. And then like two weeks later, no lie. I believe in the law of attraction anyway, but two weeks later, I get an email to my meetup group contact email. And Jeremy was like, hi, my name is Jeremy. You know, I help people clear and discover blocks that hinder them from, you know, weight loss or something. And I was like, oh my God, how can you be so specific? You know, like, how can I be so specific? And then you show up. It's like, I love that when that happens, you know, and Jeremy at the time, you're like a health, aren't you a health nutrition um, professional or something? Yes. yes. So you kind of merged your two thing, your two passions, right? That plus. Yes. I mean, I 
technically do more health coaching when I do the spiritual side of things from, from a legality standpoint. Um, <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's not in the scope of practice to not be a dietitian. <laughs> oh, like, right. Be, you're a right, right, but you right have now. that background. Like that's what you yeah. went to school for. And we'll, um, we'll learn more yeah. about that. But yeah. anyway, so... So he reached out to me and he was like, you know, Hey, I want to offer you a, like a reading. And then, you know, perhaps other people in your organization would be, would benefit from that. So I am all about learning new things. And I said yes to Jeremy's offer. And it was so cool because we just did it over the phone. He'd never met me. In fact, other than my photo on Meetup, you'd never even seen me. Like that was even before people were really doing a lot of video and a lot of Zooming and, you know, face-to-face stuff. So you never saw me before we like connected. So it, you didn't even, you didn't know how much weight we were dealing with. <laughs> anyway, and probably now it's even more. Anyway, so um, so enough about how I met Jeremy. We're going to talk in this episode about my experience 10 years ago, and I actually re-listened to about uh, 45 minutes of the recording, and Jeremy said he listened to a little bit of it last night, too. So I'm going to bring back some topics that from there and ask questions, but before we dive into that, we're going to let Jeremy introduce himself. And I just want to tell y'all that the topic of today is learning and understanding the Akashic records. So um, Jeremy's going to be our subject matter expert. He's got 10 more years under his belt <laughs> since the last time we talked at this conversation. Um, and But we stayed in touch. Like after he did that for me, we got connected on Facebook and lots of things have happened in his 10 years. And mine too. So I'm going to catch up with Jeremy on this episode. So go ahead and tell us all about yourself. Oh, um, well, uh, <laughs> that's a well, loaded question, right? I know, like, where can I go with this? So Actually, just, we'll just this. go back to like, where were you, you know, like, where were you born? And, you know, like you had traditional parents. I mean, what sure. was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I grew up in a small town in Alabama, and um, I think when I was maybe around 12, I really started to feel this this yearning, I guess, more for like more of a spiritual connection. Um, but my parents did not go to the church at that point in time. Later, they become devout Christians. Um, and of course, I really wanted to kind of connect with spirit, and that was really the only avenue that I had at the time. And I remember thinking, you know, I want to try so hard. Like I'm more, I would work, work at it, you know, and try to make it work. And it just never really quite fit. You mean traditional religion? Yeah. Yeah. Tr- yeah uh, traditional religion. Yeah. Okay. And so, sorry. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> what was it Baptist? I can't remember. We've talked before. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was Baptist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I grew up Baptist. That's why I'm yeah. saying that. Yeah. So I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 it was kind of tough. You know, you, you, you kind of wanted to fit in. You kind of wanted to kind of have this connection. And it just really wasn't working for me. And so like, what do you do? Um, but yeah, I did kind of struggle a long time with that. And uh, I think it was when I had then went off to college and um it's probably maybe like 10 years after that, I, I was going through a relationship problem. <laughs> it was, I was in an eight year relationship and it was basically falling apart, you know, and I was trying to make it work and it just was not happening. And I think at that point in time, I was so just drained um, that I just didn't have the energy for anything. And uh, I remember feeling like, why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? I had enough to be depressed about, but I thought this is something else. And I thought if it's not me, if I'm so tired that I don't even have the energy to be depressed, okay? That's, That's how I felt that maybe it's something, somebody else, maybe it's not me. And sort of, sort of asking people around me, like, how are you feeling? And, 
And I really started to begin to notice that, okay, I'm picking up on their energy. I'm feeling what they're feeling. And it's not all me. How was, old were you at this time in this, in this conversation, I like in like, your twenties? I was like 28. Okay. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. That far. I'm That's on. how long. So from 20 to 28, you were kind of feeling sluggish and depressed and now you're starting to inquire like what is this yeah you know um well so you were feeling was, other people's energy is that what you're yeah, saying okay. yeah because I, I was doing all i was doing all the the um exercise all the dedication work you know all that stuff was had tremendous progress you know with that and then of course if you if you're you, you kind of have your own baggage but now if you're trying to work other people's baggage that you don't know that you're picking up on, it was just really an aha moment for me, you know, and then learning how to disconnect from that, to know what my energy is and what is other people's stuff. It's not mine. And so that was really a kind of the starting point to really getting into finding my own spiritual path. And one of my friends, um, she had got an Akashic Record reading and I never heard of it before. I thought, well, what is that? And she started to explain it. And I wasn't sure really what it was, but I thought, this feels right. You were curious enough, yeah, right? Curious. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, fast forward, you know, a few years later, I moved to Houston. Um, I did break up, <laughs> but, you know, it's um, I'm, maybe a, a lot of your listeners feel like uh, i mean i know for me i had tried to move on but it felt like it was still there energetically it's like it was still i'm still tied to this person you know you mean and, your past relationship okay. yeah 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 um That's... yeah if you feel like you need to d- direct me please i can be kind of all over the place <laughs> you no, know? no no i'm just I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get clarity so i understand i can follow the story because i'm actually sure. really listening <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i can skip things people have told me so uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i so, was just trying to understand yeah. so you were saying that person was with you sometimes you're talking about like another soul but i'm just making sure you're talking about okay, okay. in sure. this lifetime yeah, you know, your relationship yeah. was still with you. <laughs> yeah, so I moved like 800 miles away. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't even know this thing about like, you know, this, I just thought like I could move on. And I remember thinking, I read something about your spirit guides. And I kind of tried it one day and I kind of tuned in and I'm like, I want to be done I want to be, you know, kind of cut off this relationship. It just felt like it's just still there and I can't move on. And um, what came up was like so loudly was like, speak your truth. And I thought, what does that mean? Speak your truth. I mean, what if I do? You know, like, I don't know. Um, so then I ended up coming out to my brother. I told my ex about it. Within four days, it was gone. Like it felt like it was after 16 months. It felt like it, it was gone. Like that was your gone. ex a female? No, male. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was just trying to. But you came out to your brother, so yeah. that was that was what was hidden, right? You were. Yeah, yeah but that I was, wasn't uh, known. So the people yeah. that in your life didn't know about the eight year relationship. Um, not really. No. Oh, okay, okay. So you. He, he was very secretive about it, and okay. I I, I kind of wanted to kind of talk about a little, bit, a little more about it though, but. You know, no, he got so pissed and I found out that that's what I needed. (laughs) Yeah, that's how you could let release it. Release it, you know. Yeah, um, I bet you felt lighter. I did. I did. I I think it was one of the first times that I was, you know, really asking for guidance, you know, and getting it and taking action on it and like, oh, well, that's fast. Four days. (laughs) Four what days, which was like 16 months, you know, like I should have done it sooner, you know, but I, did, but I didn't know about it until then, you know, so if I listen to your intuition. And I know, I, there's the yeah, lesson there. Yeah. It is, it is. So, but yeah, I, um, you know, then kind of started getting into the Akashic Records. Uh, I had my own reading. I started, started studying it. That's when we kind of met just, just soon after that. And then really have had, you know, a lot of amazing experiences just 
reading the records, you know, having the opportunity to share like my gifts with with other people. Um, it, it it helps them experience their own, like to discover that they're themselves, but also for me to just be to kind of live me, you know, be authentically me, you know. So it's pretty great. Yeah, you um, mentioned that in in my, our reading, but it's so amazing because obviously when you first when I first met you, I didn't know you had just kind of gotten tipped your toe in the water there. I didn't know how much you um, had been, you know, doing it, but boy, when you did mine, I mean, there were so many spot on things that you said that resonated with me. And I know that you probably went over the time that you normally would give one. Cause you did how, how long do you normally do one for like a reading? Mm, probably 75 minutes. 60. Oh, okay. Well, mine was like an hour and a half. So yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, 90 yeah. minutes. Yeah. They're about, yeah. yeah. Well, so, I mean, I felt like, I mean, I think I was adding a lot. Like I wanted to give you affirmation. You kept asking me, sure. yeah. you know, like, does this resonate with you? And I'm like, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And what was so great is you never met me. You know, we didn't even, yeah. you didn't even know what I look like. So let's go yeah. back. Okay. So does that kind of wrap up? Um, well, what do you, so, but in your professional life, you have like a day job and you, oh, yeah. you're I forgot all, I forgot all about that. Um, yeah. So I've been, no, it's okay. I'm just for, yeah. letting people know who you yeah. are at a professional yeah. level. Yeah. Um, so I've been a dietitian for the last, uh, 19 years. And, wow. Um, I got my master's in social science. science. I, since we, we met, I went back and got my doctorate in wow. nutrition. Um, really focused on like functional medicine, like functional nutrition. Yeah. Kind of getting into the root issue of things in the body. So like the, the, the Akasha Records is like getting to the root issue energetically. Yeah. You know, but all that getting to the root cause of things and how can we really support, you know, mind, body, and soul type of thing. So I love that. Yeah. I'm totally into yeah. that. And while you're talking, I want to show you what I have a book right here to show you. Um, have you ever sure. heard of this book? Let me get it off my desk here. I hope I have. There's, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, you so may not have, copies. but it's they've sold seven hundred fifty thousand copies. So okay, it's called the Encyclopedia of Ailments and Diseases by Jakar Martel. And I have seen that one. I've seen a lot of derivations of it. Okay, like, well, basically, um, yeah. a, it's a root cause. Yeah, you know, like energetic root cause. Oh, really? Yeah. Energetic. So, like, okay. you could look up. Um, you know, like, hold on, let me find something that would be interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's funny because I just turned to excess, excessive weight. <laughs> That's funny, but that, but it tells you to go to the weight. So like, yeah. look at, listen to these type crab lice, cramps, brain, cerebral palsy, brain wow. concussion. And it'll say like a brain, a cerebral concussion is a shock sustained by the whole brain during da, da, da. and then it's a form of escape a sudden and indirect way to stop and frankly observe what's going on in my life so there that's the energetic side of a brain yeah, concussion yeah and so it, this, it, it this kind of reminds me of um uh, louise hay yes your life i do have that book and that's yes been like, that's really good i i that was i probably 10 years ago, you know, got introduced to that, but yeah. I, this lady, um, that I did such so that she does recall healing is the name of her therapy. Mm. And basically yeah. it's, um, everything has a root energetic reason or like a physical th- symptom happening in your life. Like, you know, oh, I got my husband left me. Oh, and I get cancer you know, and so you can make the connection to the leaving of the husband to getting cancer. So it's really helpful for healing, um, to sure. understand this stuff, which, and I'm going to jump in the Kashuk records is a similar type of understanding, but at a soul level, right. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to understand, I'm going to ask you to define, um, a Kashuk records for the people who are like, stumbling upon my podcast you have no idea sure, <laughs> what sure. we're talking about we're yeah. going to kind of bring it to uh, and it's 
still, uh, I mean, I haven't studied it either. Some things I just have knowledge and understanding through intuition, but, um, and my higher self knows my soul knows. So I don't have like a lot of questions, but, um, I do want you to share about that. But before I do that, did you, did you finish like your, did you go through what all you wanted to tell us about your introduction and your background? I mean, are you good with that? Or like, we're up to, we're up to speed with you today, right? Yeah. Okay. Are you still doing readings for people? Uh, Yeah, I am. So I'm not quite as much, um, but, but I am doing some readings there. And uh, I think the, what I'm, I think what this whole thing with the pandemic is that I'm really trying to redefine, you know, what the next stage is, what's the next thing. And so I think really probably eventually moving out and and really doing it full time with the coaching and just yeah. kind, of, kind of like my plan. It's like a tool in your tool belt. It is. Yeah. yeah I, I understand cool. that. That's so yeah. cool. So um, that's good for the listeners to know because if, if they want to connect with you and get a reading, are, are you taking customers like I guess yeah. nights and weekends or whatever? Yeah. It won't be <laughs> like a nine to five. That's yes, right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. But a I lot of energy that. workers, you know, have to do that because yeah. energy work doesn't always pay the bills <laughs> until you put a lot of time into it. Right. So, um, well, in, in coinciding that with something else. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go to, I mean, it takes time to build something, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh. And I'm building this podcast. I just started it November 11th. So, yeah. you know, I'm, you know, you're my 18th guest <laughs> <laughs> or episode, actually, I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, all right, let's go back to what is an Akashic record? You said you went and studied it. So help the listeners understand what did you go study? Okay. So the Akashic Records is sort of like an energetic library or a database, you know, of of all the souls, you know, that's ever been uh, incarnated. And uh, for you specifically, it is a record or history of since your soul was first created until your current incarnation, your current life right now. And so whether you've had, you know, you know, one lifetime or a hundred lifetimes, you know, or several hundred lifetimes is a history of each lifetime. And so what the Akasha Records, you know, it, the benefit of that is that, you know, from when we first, when our soul was first, you know, as I say, created, that we were who we were. and a lot of times in, you know, in our lives, in each lifetime, we learn to be who we're not because it's safe. And, and, and so really it's about when they catch our records becomes more of a healing tool to where you can uncover, you know, what choices you made that became who you're not. And now it's no longer serving you anymore. You know, it may have been very protective, in previous lifetimes, but, um, but, but, but now it may not be anymore. Um, and so the Akasha records is that energetic de- uh, database. Um, they're very private though. So unlike, so ha- have you ever kind of walked in a room and you just kind of felt the energy of the room, you kind of know this person is like, Ooh, their energy feels really good. Or oh, I could kind of stay away from them you're kind of reading their mental or emotional bodies there. That's all public. That's where, that's just kind of instinctive is to protect us, you know? And so we read that and that's public. Um, But the Akashic records are very private. So when someone says, I'm reading the Akashic record of someone that they don't know and they don't have permission to access, I question the information. I question the validity of it because I've had, you know, people wanting to, for me to read like a family member and I get into the record and I'm like, something's not quite, it's just not flowing. I can't get any information. And I go back and I say, did you get permission? 
because I can't get anything. And like, well, not really like, no, you have to have permission. It's private. I can't access the information. No one can access that information. So it, so for those out there, it's very private versus like our- So you're not exposed, basically. You're not going to yeah. be exposed unless yeah. you want to be read. Yeah. And you can't. I mean, I've, you know, you can't read it. I've experienced it, okay, firsthand. Um, not intentionally trying to read it, but just not knowing that I didn't have permission. You know, I was told I was, but yeah, so it's very private. So don't feel like you're feeling very vulnerable, but you know, we are a lot of our emotional and mental stuff is pretty public there too. And that's, you know, when, when a, a lot of like intuitives or, or, or psychics, you know, they kind of tune into you it's important to know like what are they reading? Are they reading your mental or emotional body? Like, you know, like your thoughts and feelings or are they reading like your, or like your higher self, which is more like talking to your soul, you know, and probably not the Akashic Records because it's more private. You have to have yeah. more permission. Is there. the energetic body different than any of those things you just listed? Is that another one or is that part of the mental the mental and emotional like energy body yeah. that's an energy that's called the energy body yeah just think of it so like you have your physical body you have your emotional and um mental body there yeah. okay um, yeah emotions are more energy right mind yeah. is more mental yeah so it's sort of like emotions is kind of like the bridge between the mental and the body the the emo, emotion is kind of like you know, it's like energy in motion, you know, and, and so emotion is is denser than the mental body, you know. Okay. okay. That, yeah, that that's sense? fine. Yeah, that's a good uh, uh, distinction. And yeah. some of the questions I ask are just for other for the audience to understand, sure, if, sure. like, because they can't ask the question; they're just listening, you know. Yeah. The, while, yeah. While they're driving down the street, know, right? <laughs> they're like, "Wait, clarify that! I don't understand." Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I had another question. And of course, any questions that I ask that you don't know the answer to, like, it doesn't matter where you're not supposed to be all knowing. So, yeah, you, you know, you could just say, I don't know what yeah. that is. But, yeah. you know, when you were saying that when a soul is created, like the first time, mm -hmm. do you, did you get any information when you were doing your study about when does that happen? Because like, if I lived some other person, a healer told me that we asked how many lifetimes I had had. And I mm -hmm. think it was over 400 lifetimes that my soul has recreated or incarnated. And, <clears throat> and then I asked how many of them were male and it, they said all, but that's actually interesting. Cause when you were doing the reading, you found like two female ones, but, um, yeah. So do, do you know when a soul gets created or like, not know, but do, how does that happen? Is it God? I mean, who's, who's making the soul? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a great question. I don't yeah, know. That. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't expect you to have the answer. Yeah. That's why I gave you that permission yeah. to know that it yeah. may not be, but I mean, I was just curious, like, cause you were just saying when a soul gets created and I'm thinking, wow, when does that happen yeah. and how does that happen and is it is it fairy dust and mm, you know like yeah. it's just an interesting thought you know to imagine the creation of something i don't i'm not necessarily have thought you know about how it gets created because i don't think i can know that you know or at least i so i think for me just knowing that it, that it that it is created because it, it's like in me, you know, and I'm not really sure like who creates it, um, but or whom or it or how it comes or about. how, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm thinking that that whole sentence could be all wrong, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's, I mean, we don't yeah. have to go there because that is a really deep question, and maybe somebody yeah. gets channeled, you know. Mm -hmm the answer to that. I mean, I don't, I don't know, like uh, the creation story, you know, through religion tells you that we came from Adam and Eve. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's something I never really 
thought to ask, honestly. I think sometimes I think, well, what information will help the person? You know, what information? Because I think when, when I do a reading is what comes up is that, first of all, the stuff about the soul, but it's like, you know, based off of your intention with what you want to create, what what is that's what's coming forward right like what you're you're working hand in hand i guess with my higher self or the person's higher self well you're reading the akashic records you're reading Uh about the person i know but as far as like you said what comes up is that how how does whatever need to come up is that a soul thing or is it a higher self thing is my well so my intention is you know whatever I, I want whatever comes up to be in your highest good uh-huh. and what you're able to, I guess, process at the time. We don't need a healing crisis because if you've been <laughs> alive over 400 lifetimes, I don't, I'm not sure about you, but I have enough stuff in this one lifetime and I think 400 lifetimes, you can't process all that information, that, all that stuff. So it's right. about- So, it, so based on yeah. you, the reader- yeah. You are asking, what do I need to be shown so that I can deliver the information to yeah. the recipient so that her life, his life can be better and yeah. he, she can move forward. Okay. So yeah. that's kind of how a reading gets yeah. generated, right? Based yeah. on yeah. your intentions. Yeah. And, and especially the intention of the person I'm reading, because it all begins with the intention what do you want? What do you want to create? What do you want? And that's, you know, and I don't, I'm not the gatekeeper of the information. Whatever comes up, comes up. It could be, we need to clear two things or it could be six things, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's just whatever comes up. And, and so just to trust that that's. What so it, that you're it, kind it. of like either the researcher or the librarian, right? Cause you're going yeah. in and getting the, researching the information and then bringing yeah. it back to the person. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that's a really great way, way to put it there. Yeah. Oh, good. We'll see. I'm a bridge. That's what I'm <laughs> yeah. all about. You're a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> I know. A bridge to help people understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and part of it's just because I have to process information like that to really have it sink in. To like, sure. cause I really want to know, you know, I want to yeah. understand. So I'm trying to try to figure yeah. out how to make it sink in and stick. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's see when, so you've, you've talked about the Akashic records. Are there any, is there anything else before we move forward about the Akashic records that you want to share with the audience that maybe you didn't say anything about like, it's it's not scary, you know, like it's not yeah. a scary place, right? No, no, it's not scary. I mean, it's I mean, definitely if you're energetically sensitive, I mean, you don't want to be be enmeshed with another person's soul. I mean, you don't I mean there I mean there are precautions that you don't want to be entangled in that. And especially but if you have protections and stuff that you put on before you go. I have a process to yeah. where, you know, it's just that I'm making sure I'm not getting all um, energetically entwined with mm-hmm. you know, the person there. Um, and so I would say that the Akashic record is private. You can read about, you know, your soul. You can also have records that from, um, for land, for, for homes, uh, for businesses. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and especially after you get, so if you go and get a reading and then you do your clearing work, um, you know, you think about where you're living was a vibrational match to when before you got the clearing and now your home may not feel like <laughs> if that happened to me, I thought, why does this feel so bad? And like two months later, I, it just kind of dawned on me, oh, I didn't do a reading on the property. And yeah, there was reason to not feel great, <laughs> you know, uh, but you clear it and, you know, you, you know, you can kind of um, do that. But yeah, I mean, so you can, I haven't ever read for animals though. I'm not sure about animal souls. So uh, I've tried to do that, to, to do that when I had a dog, but 
I didn't really get a whole lot. So I don't know about animals. Yeah. So, somebody, um, somebody who's going to yeah. be a podcast guest did um, mm-hmm. communicate some stuff to me yesterday on, yeah. a, on a conversation that my dog was very happy to be with me. And mm-hmm. she was, <laughs> you know, like our souls were connected. Yeah. And it feels like that. Yeah. So yeah. I won't go into that. Okay. Sure. So um, do you want to talk? Is there anything more? Um, that you, is there any way that you would like to start this conversation or do you want me to kind of dive into my own personal experience? And then we can talk about that. I think just kind of dive into it. I don't really have an agenda. I think. Okay. Yeah. You know, we just conversate, have, have, have a conversation. Kind of yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, what's interesting to me is how do you know all this stuff? So for instance, I'm going to use my reading, sure. um, as an example, so you told me that I was one of my, that, I, um, and, and help me clarify how I say what I'm going to say, because sure. I may not sure. say it right. And then you sure. can help the audience understand. So you told me that I was like originally a Palladian soul. Is, mm. is that right? Is that how you say it? Like a, a soul that's a Palladian or is it yeah. just a Palladian? Yes. Just Palladian. My, yeah. Okay. And are you aware you don't have to be, I'm just, I mean, uh, uh, audience, I might be asking him questions. He doesn't know. (laughs) Just so you know, I'll try my best. do do you just get that information or like, what are all the things you can be like, how many things were there? Like if I'm a Palladian, what are the other ones that people could be? Oh, there's like, uh, 20 something other you know soul groups okay there. and that's what they're called soul groups yeah okay, yeah. okay. so it's sort of like think of a, a soul group is like where you were born so right. like you are american or you are italian or thai it's sort of like the star system. your culture right like what yeah. you're kind of made up to do or be you know yeah so it's kind of like you know you kind of have your what i now can what, what i now call energy centers um you know like that in combination with your soul group is really a huge part that defines who you are you are yeah and how you be like how you act and how you do things yeah we'll, we'll get into that i have a question yeah. what are you what is yours so i am been talking okay and tell me about that uh so they're very um <laughs> they, they like they like a lot of variety they're not very they're probably more uh, not that structured and okay. they go all around all the time doing different so things. So you're multifaceted. I get bored really easily and I'm doing different things that kind of keep me, um, I guess, occupied. And uh-huh. so um, really like being in the home. I like they're really, you know. Um, Do you, are you a gadgets person? Do you like to fix things and make things and create um, things. that's another aspect from another type of training that uh, I, or, or like thing that I have but yeah I do like to figure out how things work okay you know, and just kind of really kind of like how does the soul work how does the body work how does you know let's diagnose what's what's kind of going on there and let's try to realign it there so that's funny because like I don't I I appreciate what you just said about that because I don't really have that. Like, I don't need to know how something works for me to appreciate it. I just like the result is what matters to me. And if the result is created, then I trust it, you know? Well, that's Palladian's very big picture, big thing. They're not like I mean, the details, they, right? You no. Know, like you need to have some detail, like enough, enough to get it done. But Palladians are very big picture. Yeah. We talked about that. The ideas people, yeah, the creators who get out there and create like what's going to happen. Yeah. And they get, they can kind of get bogged down in the, in the little details of getting it done because they're big picture. So it it may be that you need to have some help with implementation there. Yeah. Can it, can a soul be like a Palladian? And what you are, you know, like, can, are there two divisions? Um, that- you could have sort of like, um, yeah, yeah, yes and no. There, there's some that the, the best way I can describe it is that let's say you were 
you know, born in Italy, but then you moved to the U.S. whenever you were one years old. Okay. okay so you have a so, little bit of both. So then you kind of have where you were, but you probably mostly want to be, you know, American, right? Because that's where you grew up. So you can have like where it's like that, or you could have where, let's say you live in the U.S. for most of your life, and then you move to another country, and now you have half and half yeah. there. And so it could be more like a blend of that. So yeah. yeah. It can be both, okay. um, but I don't find that it's easier to have so many different things going on. <laughs> so sometimes it's easier to have like one or two things, you know, where it's much simpler to, to integrate. Yeah. So. so I want to share with the audience, part of, uh, in my podcast, a lot of times I'll share vulnerably my experience so that people understand um, you know, you're not just a guest. I actually have experience with you. So what we're talking mm-hmm. about is something that I personally have, you know, benefited from. So when you did my uh, reading 10 years ago, you said I was a Palladian. And to those who don't know what a Palladian is, and by the way, I didn't really either. I had to go Google it. Um, he explained to me that I was a communicator which is so true. I got a degree in communications from Texas A&M University. I'm the youngest of four girls. So I've always been talkative. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm doing this podcast now, which, you know, means you've got to be comfortable just speaking at a moment's notice on recording. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's just something that comes easily. And, you know, kind of effortlessly and, um, has allowed me to really find something that I love doing. One of the things in the reading, again, I just listened to it like an hour and a half ago as a reminder. And by the way, you recorded it. I listened to it maybe twice, you know, 10 years ago, I never listened to it again until like 2000 and, uh, like 15, I shared it with my sister when I was visiting Denver, which she lives there in Denver. So um, I let, I, I want to hurt it. She was finally kind of open to this kind of stuff. And so I shared it with her. So mm-hmm. I listened to it then. And maybe I can't remember. I mean, it's been 10 years. Maybe I listened to it like one other time, like three or four years ago or something. But I have only listened to that recording like four times. So it's not like something I obsessed over. Like you did sure. it. I listened to it. It made sense. I kept it. Mm -hmm. And now when I listened to it today, I was like, oh my gosh, like some of the stuff you were saying 10 years ago, like I totally understand now because the dialogue in the energy community is talking about how we're all moving to a fifth, to the fifth dimension, you know, Mm -hmm. that we're all kind of the, the earth is kind of pulling out of the third dimension and moving into more of a fifth uh, dimension type um, energy. And, you know, you were sharing with me 10 years ago that that was how I was operating already because I was already on my soul's path. Like, and, and I was, I was hungry and I've been hungry since about the age of 20 to seek, you know, like personal self growth and evolution and like almost everything I've ever done has been, you know, at that, at the core, you know, even like decisions about who to marry and who not to marry. Like it was all based on what my part, what my like in, goals were, you know, as an individual. And I, like, I saw things before, they happened and then made certain decisions based on information I had, you know? So I'm just saying that this is like, this is my jam. You know, this stuff is exciting to me because it resonates. And I'm sharing that because for anyone who's curious about any, if they're just waking up to the idea that they have past lives in the first place, like, where do you get started? You know, Jeremy is someone who can help you define, and and if nothing else, you're just kind of curious. And so you're like, well, let me see what he has to say. Well, that's kind of what I did. I just kind of said, well, sure, give me a reading. But everything he said 
made so much sense to me. You, you, ba- you didn't even know me and you're defining things about my life that were really core and key, which was so great because you didn't even know that you were getting it spot on. You know, you were trusting it, right? Because you yeah. were trusting this is the truth. Um, yeah. But, but when the other person, you know, says, yes, I, that happened, you know? So yeah. anyway, um, so the, I'm trying to think of some of the things you told me that people who know me, who listen to my podcast would be like, wow, that's true about her. You know, um, one of the things I thought was really powerful and it was emotional for me is, and I share this on, you know, many of the podcasts is that, Um, Any of you have listened to my episodes before, you know that my sister died by suicide and she actually chose to have me be present when she chose to do this um, act. And through the way she did it was she created an accident to make it look like an accident. Um, But later time passed and I realized, you know, it was intentional. So one of the things that Jeremy told me in the reading was that my soul was trained or prepared to help people transition from um, incarnated, you know, people who are alive, who are making their souls transition into being um, not incarnated. What is, is, am I saying that right? It's, It's sort of like if I were to explain it, it's sort of like it, whenever you're not in a body, it's sort of like this is kind of like your job where you would help souls transition from just dying to where they kind of needed to go. And since you kind of had that history, you know, that kind of your soul job, I guess, not like a job job. But, yeah, right. Uh, that, my training, like what I knew to do, like yeah, my so, purpose. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. a soul purpose. Yeah. And so then people, I, that would that you would understand that this is like how life is and that you would, you know, be able to kind of help, you know, transition other people. Yeah. Um, you you also like, said like change doesn't, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. What? I, lo- I lost it. Oh, go it's ahead. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say yeah. you were, you were saying that in my recording, mm-hmm. uh, you're comfortable with change and I totally yeah. am. Yeah. And I've gotten that way. Um, and, and I'm, I like it. I actually have a little sign that, with a butterfly and it says change is good in my house. And yeah. a lot of people don't like change. Right. Um, yeah. so you also said you're comfortable with death and, and that's true. Like I can talk about it. I, in fact, I want to talk about it because I think it's an important topic that people need to talk about because it's going to happen one yeah. per person. Let's yeah. discuss it. You know, everybody gets a chance to die. You know, it's inevitable. So let's like not make it scary or let's yeah. not make it uncomfortable. And so I'm totally comfortable with that. Um, you said all of these things and they were all true. Like you didn't even know me and you're saying these things, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. And um, and just to reiterate, because we kind of got off track, I, I do think that my sister's soul knew I mean, she was in so much pain in her personal life. I think her, my sister's soul knew that I was a soul who had this understanding and training and, and maybe through, you know, like maybe I was in her life, you know, for that transition or, you know, it's just like, if nothing else, it's somewhat comforting, you know, because it's a horrible like situation to have to go through. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, in your right, it is definitely a, you know, not an ideal s- situation, but I think of all the people, you know, with what, you know, with like being that, you know, that person who can, you know, be comfortable with death and know that it's just a part, another part of, of life, that transition that you're, that you understand that. And not everyone know, not everyone does that, you know, that some people just, can't cope with it. it. They don't have your level of understanding with that. And that's what's unique for you. Yeah. You also said that, that I was a healer part. I think these were all part of being Palladian is, is um, being a healer. Um, no, you have, um, so you have like 
So most people have like a primary energy center and like one, which is really great because you, you, can, you can just integrate one of them, but you have two. And, and so you, you can't just do one. You need to have both and you integrate them together. So how can you use how like your voice you know, and your communication, you know, to help bring balance and beauty and healing, you know, into what, the work that you do. And, and so, you know, that's funny because that's what this podcast ended up getting created as is a way to communicate out the opportunity for people to heal themselves and so sure. all the guests that I have, for the most part, it's for people to have an understanding, for people to understand themselves better, to ask questions, to be curious about themselves and their lives. Because that's when you have understanding, you it's almost like you have everything. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's what's so great about the Akasha Records is that when you have that level of understanding you know, then you have the opportunity to make change, you know, and it's sort of like that, that saying, when you know better, you do better. But I'd like to say, when you know better, you have the opportunity to make that change because to change can be hard at times for people and they may know it. They may know that they shouldn't do this, but they do it anyway. And, and so this is a door opening up to, to transformation there. Yeah. And I'm wondering, um, another part of the reading that you told me about myself was that, um, I needed to be more authentic. And I mean, 10 years later, hearing that now I was thinking today when I was listening to that, was that about being more authentically who my soul was meant to be. For instance, you know, you told me that I was a healer and a communicator and a purpose-driven person who was meant to be a bridge to help people uh, have understanding. You you also said I was a teacher, you know, not like a school teacher, but like a teacher of educate, you know, educating and sharing information so that people could learn new things. You know, that's the level of teacher. So when you said be more authentic, I mean, I was just working in corporate America, doing my mundane, boring, (laughs) you know, job being miserable. Now I'm being that more authentic person. I'm, I'm living in my healer status. I'm living in my, you know, I'm owning it. Basically I'm accepting it. I'm calling myself the things I've always known I was, but I never told people, you know, like I'm an intuitive, I'm an empath, I'm an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person. I'm a healer. I'm a teacher. I'm a guide, you know, like I'm just owning it now, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just wondering when you said being more authentic is, do you think that was what you were referring to? Because I wasn't understanding at that level 10 years ago. Um, I don't think I, I listened to all of that reading up to that point, but I think we all have different levels of, of authenticity. You know, I think with, you know, it's like trying to be who we are. It's almost like peeling back an onion where you have that first layer, you peel it back. And now we, you know, we kind of progress and we cry and it's, you know, and this change and, and you release it and you release it. And then you go to the next layer. And so it's about, from my perspective, you know, when we talk about the Akashic record and who you are, it's about peel, peeling those layers back of who you're not to get to the core of who you are. And we not to add layers on. So we all have levels of inauthentic- inauthenticity because we have, we're being who we're not, you know? So, you know, especially think about, you know, if you were, you know, I mean, a Palladian and you were told, you know, children should be seen and not heard. And then, you know, you grew up in that and you you really internalized that into your very core and to where you're not being who you're not, you know? Yeah, you're not self-expressing. Yeah, 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 you're not self-expressed. Um, then that definitely is kind of a, I guess, and to where kind of peeling back 
those layers there to really be more authentic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that is a good um, thing to put a, an analogy for. It's like if you're a certain characteristic in, you know, you're not able to do that in this lifetime. I'm wondering if that's part of the soul's journey and the personal evolution is to like, you know, have those parents who say you're to be seen and not heard, but really Mm -hmm. your authentic self is a communicator. And part of your soul's journey is to push through that and to evolve past it. You know, sometimes I think we have our parents to, uh, teach us. <laughs> sure. I mean, and, and don't blame your parents. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so no one's blaming. That, it's all about you know? teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, when you're born, you know, you're about, vib- you're a vibrational match to your parents energetically. Now that may not be the case 20 years later, <laughs> but at the time of when, that you were born, you were a match, you know, there. And so it's about really, you know, and they can be, we can teach each other, you know, it's about having the opportunity to be able to realize, okay, oh, I need to make this change or, you know, and sometimes it could be people are in some painful situations at times, you know, yeah. but just trying to, you know, have that clarity, that under that awareness and being able to, you know, move through it there. And so. Yeah. I mean, there were so many things that you shared that you got access to in the records because you had no knowledge of me as a human being or a person. You, we didn't even, we weren't in relationship. You didn't know anything about my history. Yeah. And I mean, I just remember you talking about um, in one lifetime, you know, I was married and I um, sh- gave away 3% of my soul in a relationship and it was fragmented. I mean, just some of the, and then, and so then you were able to translate, well, what does that mean? How does that sure. translate in this lifetime, you know, and you can see, you know, like, so maybe I give up too much of myself in a relationship. And so then that like defines it. Like, that's why you do that. Like, cause mm-hmm. sometimes you're like, why do I do this? Why do, why do I not stand up for myself or why do I not, um, put my needs as a important in a relationship? Why do I not perceive myself as equitable in the relationship? You know, a lot of times you don't know why you don't, you know, maybe, maybe that's not how you were raised, but why are you doing that? So yeah. these, it, this information that you would come with helps to bring clarity and understanding and then you have like a process where you like in some cases you were able to clear something and then other things you were telling me that I had to clear. So do you want to define that? Yeah, sure. Um, so what you're talking about is um, soul fragmentation and uh, basically the kind of, I guess, make that more clear or like make it more simple is that from like this usually happens and it's been 10 years. I'm not really sure of the story you're talking about. That's okay. But, yeah. But this is like, it's something that doesn't just happen like, oh, it, oh, it, like every day. Okay. This is something that is traumatic. It's like, you know, you saw someone got, one got murdered or you killed somebody or it was rape or it's something major happened. It was like a, a violation, a violation. And either you felt either you were the perpetrator and you felt guilt, it splits your soul. You know, I, when I saw Harry Potter, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, Horcruxes, you know, you're like splitting the soul, you know, but it's, um, anyway, so I digress, but, uh, it's sort of like a piece of your soul gets ripped and it gets, you know, you, it, another, another person holds that soul, a piece of your soul. So you kind of feel like not quite whole there, or maybe you have a piece of somebody else's and then you have, you feel like something's there that's not really, you can't integrate it because it's not really you. Um, so 
but definitely, you know, talking about being, you know, you know about in relationships and being able to, um, to where that you don't have, I guess, that self-confidence or that value for yourself that can definitely feed into that, but it could also be a, a many other reasons for that as well. Not just usually soul fragmentation is pretty, you know, pretty traumatic event there. Um, but does that help out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then there were other things that like sure. you would explain to me in this lifetime, mm-hmm. um, you were born and you didn't have any, protection explain that to a listener how often does that happen that souls are born without protection all the time okay I mean, so it's common yeah yeah i mean it's very uncommon I mean, it's very uncommon for someone to have all of the protection because okay. what, so what she's talking about is that what i can what i what, what i call spheres of protection so there's like a you can kind of measure it like how like how much do you have it's sort of like an energetic barrier between you and negativity okay the more you're around negativity the more that it, it, it erodes and so if you were around it all the time um made a lot of negative choices when i mean negative i don't mean negative from the sense of what societal thinks is negative i mean negative like it's against who you really are as a soul like it's you're being who you're not you're in a negative situation um then that can erode those fears of protection to where you feel you don't have you kind of feel more vulnerable probably more energetically sensitive maybe and you don't feel quite safe there so um i don't i think i've had one person i've ever read for that had almost all of it but most everybody is we've you know this is how how we kind of get to this healing path we've been through a lot of crap (laughs) (laughs) maybe like in maybe not in this lifetime but in many other ones there too so that those erode over time so um and you can always put, put them back you know but then again there's a choice of are you going to be putting your is, are you going to be making choices that's in your highest good, or that's negative, or that's being that you're not that's going to be negatively affecting that protection there. So, how did you learn the things that you get to clear for a for a client versus the ones that like you were saying you know those are things you're going to have to do like when you gave me the release statements and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I learned how to read the Akashic Records from a program called Soul Realignment. And we have a whole protocol that we would go through. And these are just ones that, you know, that I learned that I can't do them. Um, And so since then, you know, I think as, and I still can't, there's certain things that I can't do that you have to do on your own. Um, Keep in mind that when I say I clear it, it means I can energetically clear clear that. But, you know, once you have consciousness of those choices, you still have to make new choices. Otherwise, you can always recreate it right back again because you, you know, if you start, I, if I clear it, it's clear for all time. But then again, if you choose to make the same choices, you can kind of recreate that again. Okay. Yeah. So you, so we all have free will. Of right? course. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Right. So, So, okay, cool. Um, Just so you know, we're probably like 45 minutes in. I don't know how much time you allowed for um, this recording, but I'm just wondering, is there, is there anything um, that we should cover that I don't haven't asked you? Um, For instance, um, I already asked you, you you know, you're already, you're willing to see, um, do, do readings for clients right now. Sure. Yeah. How do people get in touch with you if they want to, do you have a website? I do. Um, it's called, um, it's, it's called aerosol kitchen, um, dot com. Can you spell that? Because isn't aerosol spelled in a couple different ways? Yeah. So it's a it's a r i e s o u l. Oh. And then kitchen. Okay. Dot, dot com. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And what is what does that mean? Where did that name come from? 
So um, as with business, trying to brand something, <laughs> be different and all that, what can, um, but it came like, I'm, I guess I'm Aries um, from a, uh, I guess, astrology standpoint. So I thought, well, how about aerosol there? And then, um, so I, my company is called aerosol nutrition. Um, and then whenever I started looking at, okay, how can I combine everything together and, you know, with food and nutrition, I thought with the soul, you know, it's almost like, you know, how can we, you know, uh, I guess kind of create, you know, our food to kind of fuel our body, but also how can we nourish our soul there as well? And so uh, we're really kind of looking at, you know, what I consider the Akashic Record, I kind of call it like your soul recipe, you know, to where that you have the different pieces of yourself. Um, how do you put them together? How does it, you know, how do you function and manifest, you know, um, what you want to, you know, in your life? There. Okay. So I thought of a question to ask you. So when sure. you work with clients at a more traditional level, like if, if people don't want necessarily like just a reading, but mm -hmm. they want to come to you for coaching mm -hmm. for, um, you have a, you have a, a doctorate degree. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? You have a doctorate degree in nutrition. Is that yes. what you said? Okay. And so you can tie in coaching nutritional food plan. Tell us the more traditional things that you can do for a customer if they, sure. if, yeah. if you're taking those kind of customers. Oh yeah. I mean, for me, we, 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 we kind of talk about, you know, who, who we are at soul level. I mean, I'm, you know, an intuitive and uh, that kind of fits one aspect of my being. The other aspect of it is all about the body and, you know, and so I've done and health both and health. And so I've done both individually and, and separately, but it's likely half your, half your soul out, you know? Yeah. So it's like, like, how do we combine them together? So uh, working together, what I would do is that you kind of have your, uh, your reading and that tells me who you are and how you're meant to manifest. So I can structure like how, what, how your plan looks like there. It would be more of a coaching type of thing um, be, to where we would guide you on what things you could be implementing just because I can't really work as a dietitian there in that capacity, but definitely you have all that. I have all that knowledge there that I can really help someone create like their own plan and help coach them, you know, not only, you know, from the physical body level, but also, okay, how can we integrate who you are into the plan? Because some people have plans that really work really well, you know, and then others, you know, may go through a, like, because there's all kinds of dot plans out there and it may work for somebody and not for you. And it may just be how you're structured, how you're meant to go about doing it. Like for me, I'm not the person that I need it. If I have a plan written out, like a whole week's worth that's not me. I have to flow and I have to know, I kind of have to have, you know, certain things, certain milestones I have to have in there, but a structure plan, is just too much, too overwhelming for me. Uh, and so sometimes we kind of go through those plans that we buy a program and it's like, here's step one through 10. And some people are bored to death with it. Other people are overwhelmed with it, but it's really about trying to, how can we create a plan that's going to really fit who you are at soul level? And uh, also, you know, just to help you transform your health um, with what you want to work on there mm -hmm. too. So, okay, that's cool. So the Akashic Record reading is like a tool in your tool belt that helps is. you be Customize it. more yeah. um, integrated, be a little, have a little bit more of an edge over any other coach who doesn't use that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that, that you know can help your clients find a greater level of understanding and success as sure. well. Yeah, so, um, do you have any uh words of advice or do you have any, you know, I mean, anything related to like what's going on in the world? Like, what, are, what do, do you have any 
words of encouragement or um, a, a call to action for the audience to consider things? I mean, you know, anything you want to share? I think right now is that we can kind of get so caught up and what's going on outside of ourselves that we can really, it's really about tuning in, you know, to what's good, what's right for you um, and how you should react, not should, I hate the word should. Yeah, could. <laughs> you know, could. You could you react, know. yeah. Yeah, you know, but I think it's really about listening to your intuition and uh, just trusting that, you know, and you don't know until you, until you do it. It's like when I first started doing the Akashic Record readings, I, you know, I, don't, I don't ever know whether or not I'm going to be right or not until I present, until I talk to somebody. So it's about listening to, to your intuition and trusting it, taking action on it. And uh, just really take care of yourself. Be gentle with yourself. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that um, you know, people are, you know, are, 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 I think are tired you know, um, especially with all this kind of going on in the world and uh, really take time to nourish not only your body, but your soul there too. And, and spend that time to connect to spirit and listen to your intuition because there's, there's also a lot of gaslighting out there too, I think too. And, yeah. uh, you know, and I think really kind of, you know, coming down to yourself and really listening to that, that voice inside um, is going to be really key. Yeah. I mean, most people have like multiple, multiple lifetimes of, of survival in them mm -hmm. that they can refer to when it comes time to understanding like what they're hearing versus what makes sense to their inner self. And I love that you're letting people um, be reminded to go inward because um, one of the things that I say on the podcast is when we heal ourselves, we heal the world. And yeah. compassion starts with you and me. That's how it happens from yeah. an inside job. And yeah, so yeah. that's the purpose of the podcast is to help spread and grow compassion. But I truly believe that when we focus on like, stop looking outside of ourselves and pointing the finger at what that country's doing or what that president's doing or what that person's doing or what that celebrity's doing, whatever we could distract ourselves with is mm -hmm. just prolonging your own healing and sure. you focus inward and work on your inner self. That's where your true, true joy and your true happiness lies. So you, mm -hmm. you've got to go inward to yeah. find that happiness. Um, yeah, Cause I ultimately just, yeah. I think we all need that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can only control yourself. You know, I mean, you, I mean, you, I mean, you said it so like eloquently to where, I mean, really going within and, you know, trying to, you know, hmm. yeah, I, I just lost it <laughs> there. Just but going like, within yeah. and, and just, and focusing yeah. on, you know, what is mine to do, you know, that's yeah. what, that's where the information lives. That's mm -hmm. where our guidance lives. That's where our decisions can mm -hmm. come from, you know, and it really doesn't matter. Like, this is something I understand. doesn't matter what your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your mother or your father or your boss or your neighbor or your best friend. It doesn't matter what they know or understand. Mm -hmm. It's your life. You are living your soul's purpose. And until you start respecting that and honoring what your soul wants to do, what your soul's guiding you to do next, that's where your true path lies, you know, and there, there really is joy in that journey, the journey of self. And I'm not saying be alone in the journey because having relationships is the, is the, is this thing that we come here for. We come cool. here to relate and to be with people and to connect. And so connection is a key to happiness, actually. 
And when people avoid connection, they're only causing themselves to disconnect from that which their soul desires. Yeah. I I think that you're right. When you were talking about distraction, you know, I think sometimes we get get caught up so caught up in everything that we get so caught up in what's going on in the world that distracts us from really being who we are. And it's kind of like, cause it can be kind of, you know, sometimes kind of challenging to really speak your own be speak what you really want to say to your family, to your spouse, to your significant other, you know, cause, and, you know, sometimes that's what we need to do to grow. And we need to, you know, I've had times to where it was very difficult, you know, and it was very painful sometimes to say some things that I knew was true for me. And, but it, it ended up being correct. I mean, it ended up being the best thing, you know, so really coming back to listening to that inner self and, and uh, yeah. It's a good reminder, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. always a reminder of that. Keep, that's, that's the crux of this whole thing, <laughs> being you and uh, authentically you and living your purpose. Yeah. And it feels good. It feels good when you yeah. do it. And I don't think we ever really arrive. I think that it just makes the journey more pleasurable when you yeah. do start living your authentic self, right? Yeah, the, the, there's always a new level of understanding, a new level of, I mean, we, we won't ever get there, you know, I don't think. Um, but it's just about how can we keep progressing and having more understanding and then, you, and then you're able to feel more, I don't know, more joy and authentic, authentically you, you know, I mean, uh, that's what I kind of found is I think now I've in my forties now and I'm making like, Oh gosh, a teenager who is this, all these things is like, I'm, I wouldn't want to be that way anymore. <laughs> Trying to deal with uh, self identity and just all this stuff that is coming more into yourself and just having that level of just confidence and just being yourself. You know, that I think that can come with age and experience, I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and like, uh, just when I read your energy, you just have a piece about you, you know, mm-hmm. that you're just a lot at, at great peace, right. With yeah. your life, your situation, yeah, where you're at in your soul's journey. And I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. It has always been that way, but yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's working to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's continuous. So anyway, um, at the end of my uh, episodes, I don't know, I don't know if you got to an end of an episode and if you didn't, this is a surprise for you. One of the things I like to do is called mirror reflections and <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, you know, what's funny is I like, I did name it this because I, what the purpose of it is for my guests who listen to my episodes, they already know what it is, but basically yeah. it's a way for you to just receive the mm-hmm. gratitude and the love that I'm going to share with you. But as, as if I'm a mirror and I'm just reiterating back, like how the world, you know, sees you and sure. who you, who you are in the world, basically. Mm-hmm. But I do want to add this. I've never <laughs> said this on any of the podcast in my reading with you, I was reminded that you told me that I had in one of my lifetimes, I cr- I had these shells or something, uh, a protection, and I created a mirror reflection for people. And mm-hmm. of course, it's it can be positive when the reflection is positive. But when it's when I'm reflecting back to them, their negative aspects, mm-hmm. it's, you know, people aren't always ready to hear it. And so I had to be more careful and not reflecting the negative until they were like interested in hearing, you know, the negative. <laughs> so I, th- I thought it was funny because when I listened to the episode today, I was, I mean, the recording, I was reminded that I had this mirror capacity in me. And I thought that's really funny that I called this segment, the mirror reflection. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I, I thought about that. 
Oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna be gentle. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna okay. be gentle. I'm not gonna. You're fine. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big boy now. So. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't have a need to to show you all your bad side. Anyway, okay. So, uh, Jeremy, you are just a wonderful, joyful light in the world, and I'm so grateful that um, spirit or the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, you know, brought you to my life to share your gift 10 years ago. And I just appreciate all that information that you shared with me that provided so much clarity for me that, that long ago. And I know that, that your heart's desire is to continue to offer your gifts out there to those who are needing it and seeking it. And I know that um, your, your work and your gifts are needed in the world. A lot of people are seeking answers and going inward and needing guides and help to help them uncover things about themselves that they're unable to discover. And you did such a good job, um, even in your early years of just practicing with me, you're so, um, adept in this particular area, it's obviously part of your divine purpose to be this messenger of the Akashic records for people. And um, I hope my wish is that um, this global platform of a podcast gets you um, out there to those who are seeking something like this. And just like it happened for me when I said, I wish I could find someone who could help me at a soul yeah. level and cover, wow. you know, what I'm missing. And yeah. then you popped up two two weeks later in my emails. Wow. It was like I remember telling that story to my Abraham Hicks manifestation group about how powerful of a manifestation mm-hmm. I created. And so you are so blessed and so gifted and just thank you for doing the work you do. I know that, you know, you have your nine to five, but I hope one day (laughs) you'll be able to do more of this work because there'll be more people who need you, you know, and like less people needing nutritionists. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's more than just, I mean, yeah, I could get another whole hour there, but anyway, (laughs) but yeah, thank you for your gracious and kind words and uh yeah thank you i'm just it's a blast today i really enjoyed it so uh thank you for having me here awesome well thank you for taking the time and i love that i was able to share you with my audience so um if we have future topics maybe we'll have you know you can come back and we can have other things to discuss and use that awesome microphone that you got (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, we have matching microphones. So um, anyway, thank you so much. And um, we'll just say goodbye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. We've reached the end of this episode. If you'd like to continue with this inspirational journey, be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. If you are a self-proclaimed oneness junkie, Get yourself a t-shirt and spread the message of oneness in your community. And finally, if you have a story to share or know someone that should be a guest on this podcast, contact us at onenessjunkie.com. See you next time. And remember, when we heal ourselves, we heal the world. Compassion starts with you and me.